Hi, everybody, and welcome to another week of the Celebrity Creator Show. Brian, how are you doing this week? I'm doing terrific. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, we just came off of a three-day weekend celebrating Memorial Day in remembrance of our veterans and, um, you know, past people who have, who have fought for our freedom. Absolutely amazing. Spoke to both you and our guests before we started, and we all had um, a phenomenal weekend. Hope that you guys did as well. Before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about my co-host and co-creator, Brian Kelly. What is this little bit? Get out of here. <laughs> Brian has over 24 years of software engin engineering and software experience. And part of that experience lends to all of the amazing and creative things that you see on our website here at Celebrity Creators as well as all of the beautiful graphics and everything that's put together on our show each week. In addition to that, Brian co-owned a travel-based MLM for six and a half years. He's also a very adept at social media, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, and also very adept at affiliate marketing. Part of Brian's um, social media prowess was so great, as a matter of fact, he put together a Ning site amassed over 50,000 Twitter followers and recently sold it for a tidy sum. So that's pretty noteworthy. In addition to that, Brian has most recently been very creative with some of the videos that you may have seen um, through Facebook uh, announcing our guests of late as well. Before I go on and turn it back over to him, I just want to let you know that Brian and I are penning and authoring a book together. Brian is a speaker and soon to be author. We've been working on this, so we've got it coming together here pretty soon. So I just wanted to share that, and Brian, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thanks for another exciting week with another great guest. Mm, thank you. Oh, my goodness. You, you changed that one up. Very nice job. That was pretty cool. Uh, I know. I can't say I did much of changing on yours. I just, I'm not as creative as you, so, you know, we all have, we all have our talents, and that's not mine. No. Anyway, I'd like to tell everyone about this wonderful person to my left. Her name is Kathy Stover, as you can see beneath us. Uh, Kathy has a wealth of experience, and it, it stems from the world of business and marketing. And that's one of the reasons we connect so well is because of her marketing prowess and her background. Uh, she's got over 25 years experience as an operations manager and sales manager, and all that with a Fortune 500 company. And just, you know, to find that out in the beginning was enough for me. I said, hey, you know, what's your number? Let, let's talk. Let's, let's get together and let's do some business. But it got better. She's an extremely successful affiliate marketer with experience dating back to the early 90s. Marketing, you hear the word marketer. On top of that, she has also excelled in network marketing, known as MLM, is another word for it, dating back to the mm -hmm. mid-80s. Uh, she also holds designations, and I've seen these. They're right in front of her on her wall uh, as a power seller and a top-rated seller. Those are two separate designations on eBay. Those you don't come by easily or lightly. Others rate you. You don't rate yourself. Those, those are, you, should, you should frame those in gold, Kathy. Those are, those are big ones. <laughs> what she's currently doing, and she, she's very successful at this, is she is a social media coach. Yeah, I'm adept at it. That's a good word because she's an expert at it. She has experience as a professional speaker as well and is currently, as she said, uh, in the process of co-authoring a book along with yours truly. We're very excited about getting that done. But if you do need uh, any help with social media, 
uh, she is the person to contact. You can get to her. Just click on that contact link above us on this website later after the show. Don't do it now. That would be rude. Yes. <laughs> she is uh, very well connected uh, due to her social media prowess uh, primarily, uh, but we've also uh, shared a lot of context as well as we go on the road and go to events. Speaking of events, you do not want to miss this show because we're going to be talking about one. Phenomenal coming up in beautiful Palm Springs. Uh, but because of her connection, she's responsible for many of these incredible guests that come our way in our, on our show each and every week. So thank you so much for all the work you do there, Kathy. With that, I would like to turn it back over to you so we can bring on this rocking guest. She's gorgeous, and she's got a lot of knowledge, so stay, stay with us. You know, and that, thank you, Brian, so much for an, another absolutely fabulous introduction. <laughs> over the top. We are so excited about our guest tonight. We have known Linda P. Jones for over a year now. Linda Linda P. Jones has been called America's personal wealth mentor. She is CEO and founder of two businesses, the Global Institute of Wealth for Women, for women entrepreneurs to learn how to get started creating wealth and live wealthy and smart, for high income entrepreneurs to learn where to invest and build wealth so they can have their money working harder for them and spend less time working in their business. From a very young age, Linda searched for the answers to the question, why are some people rich? In her 20s, she identified a wealth building solution, started investing, and made her first million dollars by the time she was 38 years old. That's amazing. Linda's mission is to empower her clients so that they feel more confident making financial decisions by themselves or with their financial advisors. Because she does not manage or invest people's money for them, there's no conflict of interest, and Linda is free to focus on how to best build people's wealth. Linda worked in the investment industry for over 25 years. She represented many of the industry's best money managers and was responsible for an eight state territory with over 200 million of annual investment sales. That's phenomenal. She graduated with a BA in business from the University of Washington and is a certified financial planner. In addition to running her business, she donates her time as a member of the board of directors of Site for Life, the international nonprofit that provides cornea transplants and restores site. That's absolutely phenomenal. So that tells you that she is a woman with a very giving heart as well. I would like to introduce both Brian and I, our friend and our fantastic special guest, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to the show, Linda. Hi, great to be here. Hey, Linda. Woo-hoo, we finally got this hey. thing kicked off. <laughs> I should say welcome back. Yes. I'm blessed. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. We are going to do the full version of our show tonight. <laughs> couple right. for those of you that aren't on the up uh, a couple weeks ago we had some issues we uh had a half hour show it actually went pretty well but it didn't it we just skirted the issue of what the real show is going to be about and uh we cannot wait because linda is a wealth of information and she gives out her information about investments and the whole investing world in a very different way that i'm accustomed to anyway uh it's very uh, unique but it's also very integrity based. I don't know how to say it. it's just it's it, it works for her and uh, she has come up with a system to make it work for you. So let's get right into it. Um, I understand we were going to talk a little bit about, among other things, how investments move in cycles and why it's so crucial to understanding how to build your personal wealth. So let's start off with that. What are investment cycles? Well, investment cycles are really where the sweet spot is that people can invest and build wealth. And, you know, the problem with most investors is they invest the same way no matter what's going on in the economy. And so sometimes they do well, sometimes they don't. And so I really learned from building my own wealth that certain things did well at certain times. And there was a particular good place to invest. And so what I really found were two main cycles, uh, one being a financial cycle and one being more of a commodity cycle. Commodities are things that come from the ground, things like energy, farmland, agriculture, precious metals. And 
what most people don't realize is that we are in the commodity cycle, which started in 2001, and that has been a tremendous area to build wealth. And the financial cycle, you can tell, is out of favor because for the last 10 years, we've had the worst performing decade ever for the Standard & Poor's 500. The 500 largest companies in the U.S. have had their worst 10-year track record ever in history the last 10 years. So for those people who don't use cycles for wealth building, they maybe had a 10-year period where they haven't increased their wealth at all, or maybe they've even lost wealth. So that's why it's important to really pay attention to cycles and understand how they're so crucial to building wealth. Well, so when we're talking about cycles, um, how can, if we're involved in a cycle, how can it actually help us to invest? Well, by knowing what cycle you're in, pardon? I'm sorry, I was saying, are there some kind of specific indications that we can look at or that trigger? So there, there actually are some different things. There's, um, there's what's going on with interest rates, with inflation, with the general economy that you would look at first. And, mm -hmm. you know, from 1982 to 2001, we had a cycle of interest rates declining, inflation declining, and that's really good for financial instruments. So that was the cycle where stocks and bonds did extremely well. And now we're kind of at the point where interest rates have bottomed and they are perhaps headed back up again over the longer term because interest rates move in about 30-year cycles. So we're at about that point. But we really saw that in the early 2000s, about 2001, commodities bottomed and really started to make their way up again and have had strong double-digit returns for over 10 years since we've seen that fluctuation point. So it's a combination of what's going on in the economy, understanding how cycles work, about how long they run. They generally run about 15 to 20 years and looking for signs that really support what cycle that we're in. Interesting. Oh, okay. you, yeah. mentioned, you mentioned that we're actually in the commodity cycle right now, which includes, like you said, everything that comes from the ground. And, you know, we've been bombarded, at least we have here in Southern California. By the way, uh, Linda's coming from Palm Springs, which is even farther Southern California. But And Kathy's from Northern California. We have got this coast covered. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we've been bombarded with ads to purchase, you know, gold and silver, primarily gold, but silver as well. And you also mentioned that uh, this had begun about 2001. As far as, let's say, uh, commodities in general, how long do you think that cycle, since it is a cycle, how long does that last? When is the end of this cycle uh, proposed to be? Well, generally, we're going to look for a 15 to 20 year cycle. So if it started in 2001, then we still have plenty of time to invest in this cycle. And the reason that you hear about gold and silver, and mainly it's about people wanting to buy your gold and silver, which means that they think it's going to go up more, which is why they're willing to pay you for it now, because they think it's going to be worth more tomorrow. So mainly we've seen a lot of jewelry stores and ads on television wanting to buy your gold and silver, because they're seeing the cycle that we're in. They're seeing some of the underlying fundamentals in our economy that I'd like to cover too, that really point toward particularly the precious metals increasing in value in the next few years. Predominantly, the main pattern there is when we had the global financial crisis in 2008, we really didn't do anything to fix that problem. So what happened was it's kind of like a person who's living on a credit card and then they go and they get more credit. All they're doing is really just pushing the can down the road. They really aren't solving their debt problem. And so that's what's happened in our country where, you know, we had TARP and then we had quantitative easing, which is simply a euphemism for running the printing press. So our government has been just creating money and uh, that oversupply of money is causing the value of the dollar to decline, which is why we're seeing prices in grocery stores go up, why we're seeing clothing prices go up. You know, Walmart has just said they're very concerned about the escalating prices they're seeing because they are mostly full of imports. Uh, 
and we're seeing all kinds of prices, certainly gas prices, go up. So all of that is because of the dollar weakening, which is due to oversupply of the dollar, which also strengthens the precious metals because they are also a form of currency. And what's happening when precious metals go up and when gold has gone up from $200 an ounce to $1,500 an ounce since 2001 till today, what's happened is it's maintaining its purchasing power, but the dollar is actually losing its value against gold. Oh. So, so that's actually what's happening when you see gold and silver prices going up. They're just maintaining their purchasing power and the dollar is losing value against them. So that's a longer term trend that I teach people about you know, the signs of what's going on in the economy and how billionaires have recognized this pattern and this cycle and are really investing in precious metals to protect their wealth. Mm. That is interesting. So, you know, I'm sure that every part of the country has been hit to some degree. We know that. I shouldn't say I'm sure. We know that. As far as real estate's concerned, we have mm -hmm. really been hit hard here in California. So, mm -hmm. Does real estate move in cycles as well? Real estate moves in about an 18-year cycle. Hmm. And okay. so it could be a lot longer to come back than most people think it might. Um, even though prices are less than they were a few years ago, it really doesn't matter. What matters is where are they going. And just like people bought tech stocks after the tech bubble, thinking that they were buying them cheaper and they were going to come roaring back. We know the tech stocks didn't come roaring back. Right. And even Microsoft, which hit its peak in 2000, early 2000, is still 50% below where it was at its high in 2000. So some people who've owned Microsoft, which is a great company, nothing against them, and certainly they built a lot of wealth for people before that. But the people that bought it at 2000 haven't made any money on Microsoft. In fact, they're halfway underwater. So the same thing could happen with real estate. And particularly when you look at the oversupply of real estate that's out there, the fact that the banks really haven't foreclosed on a lot of properties and cleared them off their books, and that we're really in a bottoming interest rate cycle and rates could be going up in the next several years uh, on a long-term basis, that doesn't bode well for real estate. That will definitely keep prices down for real estate. So I'm not real optimistic on real estate as a way to build wealth right now in this cycle. Hmm. You, know, you know what's really interesting? Um, I know several people who are actually paying cash and buying up a lot of property because they feel like that's where the investment's at. Mm -hmm. not a, not, it sounds like not a good move. Well, here's the thing. If you can buy a property and it will cash flow, then you're making money. And so as long as you're able to charge enough rent where it can mm -hmm. pay for itself and you can buy it at the right price, that's probably okay as long as they're not looking for the appreciation in the value of the home to really be their great investment. But if they're looking for cash flow and maybe to pay off the property over a period of time, you know, and they're looking at it as a long-term investment, they'll probably do okay on that. But it's not something that we're going to see housing prices come back and really escalate. Hmm. Um, yeah. However, I do feel that apartments will do better because more people will be available to rent. There'll be more demand for rentals. And I think that we will see apartment buildings fare better than individual houses. There's just so much oversupply of, of homes right now. But there are really tremendous places to build wealth. And as you were mentioning earlier, there is something around the gold and silver story that really you know, needs to be talked more about because this is where I see tremendous potential for the future due to the fact that there has been so much production of money, you know, the money supply has been increased so much and the value of the dollar has declined so much that that's where we're going to see the precious metals really take off. See, we used to have money that was backed by precious metals. Yeah. It used to be until the 70s when Nixon was president that we had gold backing our currency. And then when Nixon took us off the gold standard, it was okay as long as we kept the supply of dollars not, you know, not too large. But as soon as we started printing money after the global crisis, that's when things really got out of hand and that's when the dollar really started to lose value to the degree that we've seen extreme measures by other countries like China taking uh, themselves off of the dollar for oil situation. Usually they buy dollars or oil in dollars and now they buy oil from Russia uh, without using the dollar. 
So that and other signs we see are really having the writing on the wall about what's going on with the dollar. Yeah, it's actually well, got you know, a one point of our, Oh, I'm sorry. I was just, seeing... just going to interject real quick if I can, Brian. One of our guests, Gene Stump, um, has asked with the, the gains made by China, Indonesia, and the others purchasing commodities, do you think that this is putting us in a super cycle? I think that they're part of that cycle. Um, so certainly this is a super cycle, and I think that they're seeing that that they don't want to keep their dollars either. So a lot of the Chinese money that where they used to, you know, buy our bonds, they're actually trying to take those dollars and buy natural resources. So those countries are realizing they don't want to hold cash or dollars, they want to actually own the physical resources because those are really going up in value because we are in that cycle. So yes, I do think that this is part of a, a super cycle that's going on. Hey, Gene. That was a friend of mine that chimed in. He's a very intelligent gentleman and a good friend of mine who watches our show on a regular basis. We love him. So yes. give Hi, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're talking about cycling with various types of things, real estate, commodities. Uh, I, I would assume, but I'm going to ask the question anyway, do cycles also apply to money? Oh, good cycles question. Cycles apply to money. Um... The only way I would answer that is just with, with what's going on with the dollar. They, you know, that actually does go through cycles. It does go through periods of time where they repeat. And um, so we have seen periods of time where money in and of itself has had issues. And so people have said that this is part of that re repeating cycle, which is kind of a strange thing because, you know, one of the things that I learned is that cycles are sort of part of the whole part of nature. You know, it's not just the, the seasons and it's not just women being on cycles or uh, us having, you know, different biorhythm cycles, but that really everything in the universe works in cycles. And you can see that these patterns are also working on a planetary basis, but they're working throughout everything we do. They've been able to identify over 4,000 cycles that exist. So just about everything mm. in the universe works in cycles. So you usually can see things like uh, war, uh, disease, there's all kinds of cycles that they've been able to identify and it has created an, an ability to predict. And it doesn't mean that it's exactly accurate, but it's pretty close to being accurate. So uh, a lot of times you can use these as a general guideline, and especially when you use it for investing, it can be really helpful to determine where the best places to invest are. Wow. <clears throat> Another one of our viewers, um, and you too know, Susie Manning is on with us, and she's asking um, about people who collect coins, like rare coins. Is that mm -hmm. part of the commodity cycle? It will. A lot of those rare coins had actually silver in them. And so many times when the price of silver goes up, the actual amount of the coin can be worth more as the price of silver increases. So you've got the rarity factor for the collectability, but you also have the metal content, which is going up. So both those things together are very good for coin collectors. Awesome. And uh, Linda, real quick, you, your video froze, so if you can hit that video button on the top. Like we, there you go, one. And bring her back. What's up? Come yeah. back, yeah. Linda. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Hooray. She's back. <laughs> so, one of the things that I wanted to ask about, what's happening or what happens and what's happening to the money when the government is printing too much? It seems like, I can't think of the term, and I, you'll know it, Q something. It's like when they, that comes up and they keep printing and printing. I mean, what's that all about? So that's called quantitative easing, and that's, that's a euphemism for running the printing press. So right now we're in the second phase of quantitative easing, and that just means that they can take paper and make money out of it and print it as long as they want to. Now they've announced that they're going to finish at the end of June. And 
my bet is we'll see a QE3, uh, but not right away. But I think we will see some more of that. But, you know, here's the thing. The government had choices when we had the global financial crisis. They could have, you know, let the banks take houses through foreclosure. They could have set up like the Resolution Trust Corp that we had when the savings and loan industry had troubles in the 80s. Uh, we could have gotten all the bad mortgages off the books, cleared it all out, and let investors buy them very cheaply and resell them or rent them or whatever they were going to do with them. And that would have been one way to handle the situation. But the government chose not to do that. They chose to print money instead. And when you choose that, there's really only one outcome that is going to happen, and that is that you're going to devalue your currency. And you may want to do that to make your exports more competitive. Uh, you want to try to create jobs. But the reality is, it's like being in a crowded movie theater and closing off all the exits except one and yelling fire. You know that everyone's going to have to run through that one exit. And that's basically what's happened with all this money printing is that we know that the, the value of the dollar is going to continue to decline. And so that's why you know, the billionaires are really taking a lot of hmm. proactive measures right now to take delivery of, of gold, to have it in their possession. Uh, one of the billionaires is uh, one of the Bass brothers from Texas. He just told uh, University of Texas to take a billion dollars of gold into their possession uh, physically. And wow. we've got, you know, John Paulson who made his money with the subprime prices with uh, you know, betting that subprime mortgages would go down. He made $7 billion in a short period of time. He's started a big gold fund. He's even priced it in gold so that he's not even taking dollars invested wow. in the fund. He's pricing it in gold. So he's got it down that this is to maintain purchasing power, to maintain wealth. And a lot of billionaires we're seeing move into gold and silver. Uh, Eric Sprott is another billionaire who started a big silver fund who's got some pretty high... Uh, expectations for where the price of silver is going to go in the near future. So these people realize that there's tremendous wealth that's going to be made, but also paper assets like savings accounts, bonds, annuities, pensions, things like that are going to have trouble if they're priced in dollars. Mm. And it's it sounds extreme, but we're at an extreme place where we've printed so much money, literally trillions of dollars, that we need to do something to protect the purchasing power. Wow. You know what's really exciting? Brian, you have got to share where, we're, where we are going to be in about three and a half short weeks we, with, with her. Yes, we're going to be, well, yeah, we're going to be with her. No. Yes. <laughs> Linda is putting on a fabulous event in Palm Springs. She is being very tight-lipped about it, so we're very eager to find out <laughs> uh, what everything is going, how, what, what it's going to entail. But what we, we do know is she's going to create an atmosphere that you will feel like you are one of the very wealthy and you'll be in an environment of wealth and not just hear it and see it but experience it so and how she's going to do that boy that's what i want to see and i can't wait and that's in palm springs coming up here as as kathy said just uh near the end of this month in fact there's a banner down beneath us that says live wealthy and smart intensive and uh, click on that for the information uh, you won't want to miss it. It's in a wonderful, gorgeous hotel. Uh, all the amenities. Uh, I think you even said there's a spa. I don't want to give out too much. So, Linda, maybe you should uh, fill in the blanks instead of me because maybe we're giving away too much. But uh, Well, uh, here's the thing. You know, right now people are really wondering how to build wealth. And there is so much opportunity to build wealth in the next few years that I just felt it was time to really put it out there and let people know because they're not hearing about it on the news, they're not reading about it in the paper and magazines, but to really explain what's happening and where the opportunities to build wealth are because I really think in the next few years it's going to be a huge decision point. Either people are going to be a lot wealthier or they're not going to be wealthier, they're going to be worse off. And for people who take proactive action, understand what's happening, understand how to take advantage of this like the billionaires are, this is going to be a tremendous wealth building opportunity. So I created an event called Live Wealthy and Smart Intensive and it's June 23rd to the 25th in Palm Springs at the Viceroy Hotel and not only am I going to instruct about all the tools that you need to build wealth, exactly where to invest, what to do, 
all the details about it. You're going to plan your vision. You're going to have action steps, your personal investment plan, everything that you need to build wealth you're going to have in, the, in this three-day event. And we're going to have fun experiencing wealth and living and stepping into a world of wealth so people really feel wealthy while they're there as well. So I just thought it would be a fun event to do. It was just something you know, I thought up and thought it was perfect timing and just am excited to, to have the event. Can't wait. I know. We're, we're, doing the big, we're doing the big black X marks on the calendar. Yes. They are, they are reserved. <laughs> you know, we were talking about printing too much money or, or yeah, in overabundance of printing uh, money and, and what how it impacts folks. I got two questions. We were talking. You were talking about gold and that you should acquire it physically. Uh, the first question is for our listeners, I guess. Where would we store physical coin that weighs so much, and depending on how much you get, can take up quite a bit of space? And the other part was how is all of this uh, government printing and devaluing of currency, and aside from annuities and pensions that you mentioned earlier, going to impact our listeners? Oh, good one. Well, when you're purchasing physical gold and silver, there's, of course, some that you want to have on hand and you want to be very careful about that and have a very secure, safe place, hopefully a safe and hopefully something that's set in concrete. Um, but if you don't have one, then consider purchasing something like that. But you need to have a very, very safe place to have some on hand. In addition to that, you might want to have someone else store it for you. And there are some reputable places that I recommend that I'll be talking about at, at Live Old Theme Smart um, where people actually put your name on it, they segregate it for you, and they have an independent third party auditor check on it to verify that it's there because mm. that's a very uh, important part of having someone else secure it for you. So there's different places that I'm going to recommend for that. There's um, you know some very reputable people that do that that I've placed money with that I trust and um, so those are the things that you want to look for is really the the independent third party uh, auditing and having it segregated for you and in addition there's definite places you don't want to use for your gold and silver and I'll be talking about that at the event too but you need to have the real assurance that it's independent audited segregated those are the really important things for people to do and how this is going to impact everyone is it's, it will impact everyone because it's about our currency. You know, it's about our purchasing dollars. And, you know, it's not as obvious when you're here in the U.S., but when you go abroad and you see how little the dollar buys or you are buying imports here and you see how prices have gone up. For example, this weekend over Memorial Day, one of the things I like to do is go up to the outlet centers um, nearby here. So, and I always joke with people that I have to go to the Jimmy Choo outlet, which, which I was at this weekend. <laughs> and um, anyway, you'll see my shoes at the event. <laughs> but, um, but there was an Italian store there called Loro Piano, which is a very nice high-end store. I love her things. And I walked in there, and a T-shirt was $500. Yikes. Just a regular T-shirt. Now, her stuff is expensive, but not usually that expensive. I felt so sorry for those poor store people who worked there because the prices, when you take the Italian dollars, you know, the, the euro, and then you convert it into U.S. dollars, this is what the prices go up to, and this is what they have to charge in order to get back the money because of the devaluation of the dollar. Wow. So... I just was astounded when I saw those prices. Wow. Now, the other side of that is there were a lot of foreigners who were there shopping. And I've seen on television a lot of foreigners in New York City who are flocking to the U.S. from Europe, from other countries, from China, Japan, other countries. Because our dollar is so weak, they're coming here to buy our goods because our goods priced in their dollars are a lot cheaper. Wow. So. It will impact everyone in different ways, but what it's going to do for people that hold most of their wealth in cash is be devastating to what they think is safe. Those people that have bought bonds or are sitting in cash thinking it's safe, 
that is going to be a rude awakening for them because their cash isn't going to have the purchasing power unless they do something to maintain that purchasing power. Yeah. Wow. That's that's a tad. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is Susie or Fuzzy or Susie and Fuzzy asking the question be because it says Susie signed in. So I'm going to say it's both of them. Okay. But they're saying hey, if the paper dollar is losing um, their its value, then why would somebody um, take currency take currency for the purchase of gold? Oh, I see what they're saying. Okay. So why would the dealers want to take it? That, I think that's I think that's what they mean. Okay. In so other the words, dealers the paper in money the business. Is not, Right. So the dealers in the business of buying and selling currency, that's how they're earning their living. So the more currency that they're selling, the more that they're making. And all the time that enables them to buy more for their own personal ability. And so they can, you know, have a bigger personal savings uh, for, full of their own gold and silver. But they're going to continue to be able to secure it places. And, um, you know, it's certainly still a good currency. It hasn't had its issues yet, but you know, we do have rating agencies that are looking at downgrading, uh, downgrading the dollar. We've got uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank has just approved gold for physical delivery for in terms of payment. Wow. We've had the state of Utah just approve gold and silver as a form of currency, and many other states are looking at gold and silver as a legal form of currency. Um, we've got the Chicago Comex, where commodities are traded, accept gold for the first time as physical payment. So we're starting to see this change where um, we are starting to see people accept gold and silver as currency, and they're starting to accept it. And that, to me, is a sign, uh, you know, of the change that's coming. That's almost wow. scary. <laughs> You know, it sounds scary, but here's the thing. You can look at it uh, and be afraid, and I really am not a fear monger. I look at this as opportunity mm -hmm. because for the people that get this right, just like the billionaires are planning big time right now to get this right and to make a lot of money on this, the people that get this right are going to have incredible wealth, incredible wealth. I mean, some of the projections of how high gold and silver can go are tremendous because again the dollar and gold are are in relation to one another so when you look at how many dollars are printed and people can project forward how much you know how high these metals can go the numbers are astounding and they're really taking you know the the known mind gold and silver that is limited in its existence and they're taking the trillions of dollars that have been printed already and they're using that in a mathematical equation to come up with what the future values are already based on just the dollars printed already how high these could go and mm -hmm. it's astounding how high they can go so I feel like people are really early getting into the cycle and there's a lot of room to go and for those people who get this and understand this and really understand what's happening and it really took me three years to study this and research it and figure all this out because even though I was in the financial industry it was never talked about what happens when a currency is printed like this the Europeans are familiar with it some South Americans are familiar with it because they've had this kind of experience before but Americans have never been through this so it's something that if you get it right and you understand it you really educate yourself about it there is tremendous tremendous wealth that you will build by being in the right place at the right time. So I tend to look optimistically rather than, you know, be a fear monger. So let me ask you this. Is there anybody that will not be impacted by this? There may be, you know, it might be the Chinese who don't have any debt, who have a strong currency, uh, which will probably continue to get stronger. They may end up doing well out of this. Uh, Australia also has a very strong currency and a lot of natural resources behind them. They may also do well. But most people in the world are going to be impacted in some way because the dollar has been the reserve currency. It's been how oil is priced. It's you know really been 
the stable currency in the world. So there are people that are foreigners that own dollars and definitely will be impacted. And their own currency may be impacted. You know, the euro is, is having some issues too because it's got countries that are, uh, you know, like Greece and Portugal and Spain. And there's a lot of them that are having trouble right now. And so it's, you know, not in the best of shape either. So uh, there's, a, you know, the majority of people will be impacted by this for sure. I gotta, I'm going to ask you a really tough one, Linda. Would you consider running for president? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks <laughs> we need to get our uh, financial house in order this is you know we've been hearing about it it's coming blah 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 for a long time but it's here really uh, that america is no longer the superpower financially that it once was and that's it's almost sad it's not almost well, sad it is sad well what's and, happening is sort of like a great leveling it's a great um rebalancing of world economies and so some of the poorer economies, the developing economies are coming up in the world. Some of the more developed economies are coming down in the world. But it's going to have more of an evening out, if you will, around the world, around the globe. And, you know, we'll see how that all turns out. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's too much for America to have all this war overseas, all the, all the you know, the military that we have, those expenses the the money printing the you know the 14 trillion dollars that we're in debt right now not counting medicare medicaid all of that i mean it's really we've just you know put too much out there and so at some point we really need to straighten all that out and figure that out but um, again it's it's not being negative it's just seeing that there is tremendous opportunity because you know what I call the wealth building formula is that you take the amount of time that you have to build wealth times the money that you have times what you can earn on your money. And so most of us have limited time because we want money sooner so that we can retire sooner and enjoy it sooner. So most of us have limited time before we retire. And then most of us have limited money because we've worked most of our lives and people have saved and invested, but you only have so much money. It's not an unlimited source for you in your possession right now. And so that leaves really the interest rate or how much you earn on your money as the most important factor to building wealth. Once I realized that, that's when I became a millionaire because hmm. I realized that you had to be in the right place to build wealth at the right time if you were going to actually make wealth. I mean, you can't take 10 years and earn nothing on your money in the stock market you know, 10 years to go by is a long time not to build any wealth. And so that's why investing in cycles really appealed to me because I realized that there's always a right place and a right time to invest in a certain cycle. As long as you can identify that cycle because of what's going on, you can really build wealth. And with gold and silver, you know, gold has already uh, compounded at 17% a year for the last 10 years. And silver has compounded at 24% a year for the last 10 years. So, you know, 24% silver will double every three years. Your money will double versus in a 1% savings account, it'll take 72 years for your money to double. So it's really important for people to be in the right place where wealth is building so that they can enjoy the money and really grow their wealth. This is what most people don't talk about as, as advisors. My gosh, you know, I had no idea that this kind of information was going to, this is like we said in the beginning of the show, that Linda gives it in a different way. And it's such an eye opener that I could, Kathy and I could, we, can you, can you stay for an extra hour, Linda? <laughs> My <laughs> goodness. Go to the event. Go to the event. Yes, exactly. Go to the event. That's the best answer because we could be here all night. The questions going through my head are just, they're swirling. <laughs> I, what is this financial shift you talk about? Can you explain that? Well, that's a wealth transfer. And the wealth transfer comes when people realize that paper money isn't as secure as they think. Uh, and those savings accounts and those bonds and the things that they thought had value, they see that their purchasing power is not being maintained. So they're really, um, it's really about the people that, you know, at, at a certain point, 
realize that they're going to want the physical metal, they're going to want the actual physical money that can't be printed, that can't be reproduced, that's in limited supply, not the stuff that can be printed on paper for three cents and, you know, printed into oblivion. And so when it gets to the extreme, there's going to be a real wealth shift because the people that have tangible assets, and it's not just gold and silver, it's things like farmland, particularly raw farmland, um, agriculture, and energy, different forms of energy, those things are all very tangible things and other types of commodities that come from the ground. But those things are all going to gain tremendous value. Um, you know, also rare items, rare gemstones, rare coin collections uh, that you mentioned. You know, so things that are rare in limited supply, this is the cycle where they're really going to increase in value. So that's where the shift occurs from the paper assets to the tangible assets. I'll tell you what, I don't want to give away anything that you might be doing um, at the event, but I do have to say that you shared with Brian and I, um, it's been about a year ago, some information that I can say personally has impacted my life. It has personally impacted my life just in the past several months when I started taking a different view and following some of the principles that, that you shared. So with that being said, I, I just, again, you, you may be sharing some of that at your event, but it's extremely powerful to have the kind of knowledge that Linda is willing to share that is outside of the box of what she talks about, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot. And that's the fact that you will not hear this kind of information from a personal financial advisor and some of these folks that you see at the bank and, and um, online, et cetera. Even mainstream, when you watch some of the financial programs and some of the information that they give, is nothing close to the kind of information, life-changing information, that Linda shares with people. So I just I wanted to put that out there. Um, and then Gene Stump has, has asked something else, Linda. He's saying, you gave Napoleon Hill and his book credit for changing your life. Are his personal development and yours timeless, meaning will they all always work? Yes. Yes, they will. And I'm glad you brought that up. And that kind of ties into the to your statement that you just made, Kathy. I tend to start with more spiritual principles. If you remember, Napoleon Hill said, what you can conceive and believe you can achieve. Really, all wealth starts in your mind. And it comes with what's in your subconscious. Uh, most of us have a bunch of junk in our subconscious because of the way we were raised or what our parents taught us or our own experiences in life of our own money. And so a lot of people have a tough time with feeling they deserve money, feeling worthy of wealth. So I start with the mental aspects around wealth and it goes way beyond the law of attraction. It's, it's really, I think that doesn't really even scratch the surface. but. It is uh, in a spiritual realm around what you believe and what you can cause to, to be happening in your own life. I think we're all in control of how much wealth we build in our lives. And I think the universe is trying to give us wealth. And I see many people deflecting that on a daily basis. People that I mentor, people that I talk to, it's astounding how unconsciously they're deflecting wealth. Hmm. Um, just just uh, amazingly. I mean. You know, one person I know uh, was an early shareholder in Microsoft, you know, basically just had to hang on to the stock and would have been enormously wealthy, but sold out of that stock, had another opportunity to build wealth in an internet company, same thing, sold out of that one, just didn't have faith, sold out, and, you know, I mean, here are two tremendous fortunes, like, back to back, he just you know, blew his opportunity on. But, you know, also, you know, I think that our own gifts and talents are our own personal currency. So I like to see people mm -hmm. use their life's purpose, their passion, their talents to create their currency. And that's what the universe is giving us to create our own currency. And when you use your own personal gifts and talents, your passion as your currency, great things happen in your life. And so I think, you know, from a spiritual perspective, that's incredibly, incredibly important. And then one of the other things you said, Kathy, was um, about how what I teach is different from financial advisors. And, you know, it, it started because I was building wealth in my own life, working for 
a financial firm and realizing that what was working for me was very different and sometimes opposite what the firm was teaching to their clients. Hmm. And so I wanted to start a business where I could just focus on what really built people's wealth. What is really best for them to build wealth? What really works? And not from the traditional principles that the industry has taught because, you know, they usually are part of a publicly traded company and they have stock. And their legal, their legal obligation first is to their shareholders. It's not to their clients. It's to their shareholders or their stock. So I wanted right. to take that conflict of interest out and I wanted to not manage people's money and also not have that conflict of interest but come from a purely educational point of view and say where does wealth building really work? How does it work? Why are some people rich? I read all these books starting with Think and Grow Rich to determine how people built their wealth and I saw certain patterns and when I followed them I became wealthy too and that's what I teach. It's really not anything to do with what the financial world teaches. It's very different. Oh, and it's kind of like this. Uh, you know, you have a financial advisor. What do they do? They get up every morning, Monday through Friday. They punch a clock, and then they go home. That means they have not made it to that level of wealth or freedom that someone like, say, I don't know, Linda P. Jones has. So who would you rather get your information and guidance from? A financial advisor in a brick-and-mortar business that's punching a clock, fighting commuter traffic, spilling coffee in their lap, or someone that's relaxed and in a, in a wonderful home and look at that environment behind her who's already made it. And you know what, folks? She doesn't need to do this. She has no, no, there's no need for her to do what she's doing right now, sharing this information with us. And that shows you the kind of heart she has. She wants to help people. And that's, again, why you should go to her event. We're dead serious about that. Uh, click on that banner down beneath and get the information there. Also, don't forget, I don't want to steal everything, but let, let, uh, click on her nose, and it's either to this side or it's above us. It's somewhere on the website. I always do this, but just in case. <laughs> the one that's not moving right now, that would be the one we're talking about. That's Linda P. Jones. Click right on her nose, and that will take you to her Facebook page. So connect with her. She is. You can tell how kind and wonderful she is. Uh, when we met her for the first time, didn't know her from anyone. She was very warm and very kind, and we, we struck a, a friendship immediately. So be sure to contact her. Uh, okay, Kathy, I'm done. You can go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank, thank you very much. We needed to get that in. She is so enthralling with all this fabulous information. It's like it, it's hard to think past on yes. some of the stuff that we usually do every week. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask is how can people get on the rich side of being richer? How can they get on the rich side of being richer? Yes. So again it all starts with your mind and what you believe and they really need to work on their belief systems around money mm. and uh, you know there's some ways to start with that the first thing that I recommend that people do is always start with gratitude because gratitude will actually shift your mindset because most people are rooted in fear because our whole society, our television, our media, everything that is marketed to us, all these products that are marketed to us are constantly telling us something's wrong, we need to be fearful, uh, you know, all of this negativity so that we buy their product to solve it, right? So we have just bombardment with all of this negativity and the first thing that really will change and help you start building a different mindset around wealth is to become entrenched in gratitude and when you write down a list of a hundred things that you're grateful for you start to feel a shift in your mind you start to feel more positive you start to feel less fearful because fear and gratitude cannot exist in your mind at the same time so once you're in the gratitude mode you get out of that fearful mode and so just write down a hundred things you feel grateful for just try focusing on the glass half full and what you're feeling grateful for. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is actually changing your subconscious belief systems. And I use some belief statements that I work with people on to change what their specific uh, beliefs are around money and get them to take those limitations off. Take off that visor that's kind of over your eyes that is limiting how much money you can see out there. You know, today I was working with one of my mentoring clients and she was saying something like, oh, I was afraid I missed this opportunity and I was really kicking myself. And 
I said, you know, money is like an escalator. Like, there's always opportunities to make money. The next step is going to come up, and the next step, I mean, it's always there. There's no shortage of ways to make money. So don't worry that you're missing this one opportunity because while what I've been talking about tonight is a great opportunity, you know, there's going to be another cycle and another cycle. But this, I think, is a tremendous cycle for people to really build wealth. But there's no shortage of opportunity. There's no shortage of wealth that the universe can bring to you. And what I see is most people are not following up on things. They quit. Uh, they give up. They don't follow through. That's the kind of thing that that stops the wealth building because they're not pursuing the things that will bring them wealth. Man, Go, another yeah. hour. <laughs> uh, one more hour. Hey, uh, I wanted to mention real quick. You, you commented about. Uh, potentially a free gift for folks if they went to a certain website where they could acquire some cool tips? So you can go to livewealthyandsmart.com and I've got some videos there that uh, you can listen to. Also the Global Institute of Wealth for Women or you can go to showmewealth.com and there's the eight steps to wealth that I used to become a millionaire. I have them each on video. You can opt in there. Men or women are welcome. You can opt in and listen to each of the steps that I use to become a millionaire that um, are in order of what to do and how to get there. Fantastic. We appreciate that. My pleasure. My goodness. So, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Brian. I was just saying, my goodness, my, my head's swirling. It's absolutely crammed <laughs> full. There's no room for anything else. What else we got? <laughs> no, I was just going to say, when when you think about all of the possibilities that are out there and you get caught up in watching TV, I, I do. I, you know, I used to be very adamant about watching some of the financial channels and keeping track of the tickers and what was going up and moving and, and all of that stuff. And I have to tell you, since meeting you, when I go in to look at those, I just, I look at, at those programs now with a, with a different eye and a different view. It's not in the same way that I used to. I'm not as trusting with the information that I'm hearing because I know that what they're putting out there isn't really for our benefit. And so I really feel strong that had Brian and I not met you, these things wouldn't have been evident to me. I would have still been looking and watching stock moving up and down and kind of chasing some of the things that I've chased over the years. So I'm very grateful that we that we become friends and that we had the opportunity to meet you because, no pun intended, you are a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> well, thank you. And, you know, those financial channels are owned by big corporations that rely on advertisers. Mm -hmm. And so they have to be very careful what they say and what they don't say because they want their advertisers to be happy. And if you notice, they don't really present one case or another. They keep everything very balanced and... Uh, don't really let what is really happening, the undercurrents of what's really happening, be out there too broadly. So it's there if you look for it, but it's not presented to you in the way that I present it to people. Yeah, and typically, once that kind of information gets out that reaches the masses, it's typically too late anyway, because everyone that got in at the beginning who aren't part of the masses have already acquired the wealth and the prices have changed, blah, blah, blah. It's what it seems to be anyway. And so we have... The insider trader extraordinaire in a legal sense in Linda P. Jones. So we have someone who has her, her finger on the pulse of the financial industry in, in no way that I'm sure many of you have ever seen or heard before. So absolutely be sure to go to this event. Uh, Kathy and I will both be there. We're going to be there uh, helping Linda and you know working our rear ends off and then living in a lap of luxury uh during the event <laughs> as well it's gonna be a blast i can't wait i can't wait till we find out the rest of the details it's killing me but uh <laughs> looking forward to it <laughs> i know well i'm just gonna say here we are at the end of another hour and brian has alluded many times tonight that he wished we could have you on for another hour <laughs> so what that means simply is you're gonna have to come back but because you've got so much coming on but between now and June 23rd through the 25th, that's not going to happen. But we're excited about your event coming up. We're excited to see you in person again. We hope that everybody that's watching is going to take the time to click on the banner below and join Brian and I along with you in this 
fabulous event that you have set up with, by the way, we haven't even mentioned some of her guest speakers that are going to be there are over the top. And for those of you out there that kind of run the event circuit, these are not people that you find at, when you go to a regular event. They are like fresh, new, exciting, some incredible information to share with us. So I wanted to make sure that we put that out there because they are absolutely amazing. And yeah, and you've I'm got to yeah, you've got to have health to be wealthy. Yeah, so we're going to have a person talk about vibrant health and about looking wealthy and smart and about relationships and becoming a love trillionaire. Ooh. I love it. Woo! I love so I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart, Brian, and I just absolutely adore you and what you're mm -hmm. doing to just share the, what you understand about wealth. You are America's personal wealth mentor. We're so excited that you came on the show with us. I'm going to turn it back over to Brian. And Linda, uh, personally, I just want to say God bless you and thank you for what you're doing because, as we mentioned earlier, this is something you don't have to do. It's something you've chosen to do. It's your passion, which thankfully it is. Uh, can't you, know, you talk about gratitude. Well, there's gratitude. We are very thankful that Linda P. Jones has crossed our lives, our paths, and we are now getting to know her more and more as each passing week goes by. And the, what we have found out and what we know about this woman, Kathy and I definitely like. Uh, we love. So... Get hooked up with Linda either through Facebook, go to the event, some way, somehow, attach yourself to like her skirt. Just grab on and don't let go because <laughs> this is a woman you want to, to follow and be with and, and learn from. That's the bottom line. Uh, Linda, thank you once again so much for uh, taking your time and being on our show and providing incredible information. I, I, I got another hour in me. Let's go. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to respect everyone's time. We're a couple minutes over. That's okay. It's our show. We can do what we want. And with that, we're going to say <laughs> good night, everybody. Thanks once again, Linda. We'll see everyone else uh, again next week on our next show. Good night now. Thanks, Brian and Kathy. Bye, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye.